That's Doug Coy, and welcome to Online Dateline. Well, now's your opportunity to get on the phones. 1-866-NOW-TV-10. Have you had an experience as far as moving that has been one of those uh, horror stories? You know, uh, things didn't maybe go the way that you wanted them to go. You expected your furniture in Vancouver, ended up in Saskatoon. You know, whatever the case may be. Give us a call. Uh, maybe you've had some experience that will help others as far as the move. You know, some mistakes were made. You found out how you could avoid those mistakes, and you will actually help somebody else who might be thinking of going through a move. Or maybe you're right at that point in time where you're saying, how do I know who's a good mover and who isn't? Well, we have a uh, president of a moving company with us tonight. We'll talk next. Movers who talk about one price at pickup, then later demand much more. They called and said, you don't owe us $1,600, you owe us $8,800. And if you don't pay up, look out. Oh, my God, they're taking off with my stuff. From mind-boggling math. 0 0.05 per pound per feet. To puzzling paperwork. Gonna sign, sign, date, date. And then, this. Anything that has legs is basically broken. Our Dateline investigation, including our own moves documented by hidden cameras, reveals that though many in the industry are honest, many others are taking consumers and all of their belongings for a ride. Well, moving is always such a hassle, but uh, no, none that I can think of. Yeah, we've even seen many times in this short space of time. They're always bad experiences. <laughs> we just moved our office down here last month. That took us a lot longer than we thought it would take. A mix of experiences, both good and bad. None. It's all been positive. There you go. It's all been positive. So we can go home. Uh, online Dateline, uh, my name is Doug Coy, and welcome. You, can't, you know, you must admit, we cover just about everything you could possibly cover. Tonight we're talking about something that, as I thought about it, I said, what are we going to talk about as far as moving? Then I started talking to friends and neighbors and people, and, oh, some of the stories are amazing. So we'll take your phone calls, 1-866-NOW-TV-10. Uh, let's go back to uh, Dateline, where they talked about many suffer from the perfect scam. Now it feels real. Now the Kellys say they real. finally will be able to live their Las Vegas dream. It's going to be like Christmas. I guess we'll just open the boxes, maybe we'll put up a little tree. It turns out, though, this is a happy ending in a sea of hard luck stories. That's it. My family refers to this as the echo chamber. There are many others around the country still reeling from their moving day ripoffs, victims of what some call the perfect scam. Oh, my God, they're taking off with my stuff. <laughs> That's got to be a terrible feeling. Uh, isn't that my furniture going down the road? Uh, I've had so many stories that people have told me about, and we'll be listening to yours in just a second. Again, 1-866-NOW-TV-10. We're talking about moving. What have you learned? Uh, what has been your story? Ron Laporte is with me. He's the owner-president of Laporte Moving and Storage Systems. And uh, you're, uh, it's also Atlas. Is it Atlas? Atlas Van Lines. Atlas Van Lines is the company that you work with also. Uh, what's the moving? Uh, you know, you watched this whole thing today. I gave you a copy of the show. What did you think as you were watching it? Well, it looks like the consumer is at fault. You know, I don't see, uh, there wasn't much mention of the van lines like us. There was Mayflower van lines that had the higher price, and they didn't entertain them. They didn't talk to them about the service they could have given. And perhaps their price, once it was over, might have been less or the same. Um, so they took a risk, all of those people, and all of them paid, except for that one couple that I think came off all right. But the rest of them took a real risk, and I guess it was their budget. You know, by the time it gets to moving, most people are getting pretty short, and uh, they take the best price they can find. And that's an old, that style of moving, you know, finding a mover in a truck to move is, is 50 years old. That was before the van lines. And that's where van lines came from. That was the reason for it, was to give the people, when they move, some security through the move to destination. And when those problems happened, there was a van line representative of whoever, Atlas, United, Allied, at the other end to answer to the problems. And maybe if those storage things happened, that storage business that happened on that one move wouldn't have happened with a van line. The van line itself would have stopped it and settled it before then. And they would never have been charged more than 10%. That was the other odd part of all of that. Yeah. I, I, I just went through the Surrey uh, phone book a while ago, and I, I think we found somewhere in the neighborhood of 70, 75 movers. We didn't count them exactly, but a lot of them. And big ads, big ads. Everybody's, you know, the new companies, of course, get 50% off, right? So they can afford to do that. And then uh, in the Vancouver phone book, what do you, what do you think? A couple hundred? Three, maybe. 300. 300 movers. So out of all that, 
<laughs> so what do I do, take a dart? And, yeah. you know, I mean, how do I choose a, a reputable mover? But they all made that mistake. I mean, they went to the Internet, which is fine. We're on there as well. But I think you've, it's like, it was like coming here today, you know. You called yesterday and invited me to be a guest. And so today I came by to just meet you and see what it was about. And I'm surprised you came in yeah. after meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it was, but really the experience was one that people should use when they're moving. Get two or three estimates or five or whatever they want and get a short list of which movers they want and then go to their warehouse and look at their trucks and look at their men and find out what they're about. But know that most people buy on price so much per hour or so much per 100 pounds on a long distance move and hopefully some fix to it and then turn it over to some mover without ever seeing who they were. That one was uh, working out of their house. That's pretty common. A truck in the backyard and a, a big ad in the phone book. Yeah. And there's some of these guys, I mean, it, it is actually scary. You don't even want to go into the area where their trucks are kept, more or less put your, uh, you know, your furniture, and, and this is everything you own, and you're going to give it to somebody that you really don't know, yeah. and they're going to move perhaps across the country with your stuff. i got a lot of questions, but we got a lot of calls, too. Marlene is on the line. Hi, Marlene. Hi. How are you tonight? I'm fine, thanks. Okay. Uh, your moving experience. My moving experience was cross-country. I was returning from Ontario to uh, B.C., mm -hmm. and I had um, done my homework. I had um, gotten s several estimates. Unfortunately, my mistake was that I didn't have them come and um, uh, view my, uh, my belongings to uh, give me a true estimate. So you're, you're, they did it over the phone? You said, I, I have... I had, well, I gave I them have... a, a, I have a one-bedroom, I probably, you know, and gave them an idea of what my contents were. Um, uh, sectional sofa bed, yeah. queen size bed, wall unit, whatever. And he says, "Well, that <clears throat> sounds like it's about three thousand to four thousand pounds. Uh, we'll weigh it when we get in the truck." They gave me a reasonable estimate, and I took out extra insurance in case there was damage. Right. And um, when they packed up my uh, belongings and they took it out, they put it in the van, took it in, stored it then moved it again, put it in the truck, which was going to take a month to get from Ontario to B.C. Right. So once I got, they got here, and they were a bit late. They were about two weeks late, so it was six weeks. And why did they say they were late? I mean, when you ask them, you know, why are you two weeks late, what did they say? Oh, well, we had some extra pickups and deliveries, blah, 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 and it's fine. He says, well, you weren't in a hurry. And I says, so well, true enough, but I had um, rented a storage space, and was waiting for them to to drop it off to drop it off sure I didn't exactly need it right away because I had I was um, sharing accommodations with somebody so 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 eventually it got here they got it in storage well yeah they brought the truck to the storage space and when they opened up the truck it was a virtual nightmare there were boxes all over the place my stuff was mixed up with other other movers <laughs> or other individuals and, and I, I, I bet you there's a little thing coming here about cost also yeah, the cost changed. Um, How much did it change? It went up by um, about fifteen hundred dollars. You're kidding me. And um, I had a bo when it all came down to it, and, and I finally moved into my apartment. I started counting boxes, and I was one box shy, and I knew exactly which one it was. It was one with all my china in it. It was glass, which I packed everything myself very carefully. Had blankets, paper, and everything. So I called them up and I said, um, "I'm missing one box." No, you're not. Yes, I am. Did they had they itemized? Well, yeah, they had. Okay. And so, and I had as well. So I says, "No, it's this box missing." So the guy hummed and hawed, and he we got into a um, quite a heavy argument. And um, he says, and then it got to, "Don't don't speak to me like that, and don't swear at me." I said, yes. "Well, you've so, got." So the thing, the the situation just got worse and it worse. It escalated, yeah. How did it finally end up? Um, I finally did get my box. It was damaged, and all the goods in it were broken. So they had the box someplace? They did have the box, okay. and it was in Ontario. Well, you had a nightmare. Um, yeah. All right. And uh, it's not to finish yet. When I said I had taken out this additional, I said, you're responsible. All my furniture is damaged. Anything that had legs was broken. There were no boots or there was no padding on the, on the, the wall unit. So I asked them, I said, well, now, how am I going to get compensated for these broken dishes? I've got glass tinkling in here. They had unwrapped the box, turned it upside down to make it look as though it, I don't know. I, they, I, knew, I knew I hadn't packed the box that way. 